twilight of Earth's great civilizations, we were chosen. Some were selected for their skills, others for their strength, and some by luck. Great ships were the embodiment of each nation's ingenuity, courage, and faith. And they sent us to the stars in search of a new home. As we raced skyward, we carried aloft the hopes and dreams of those left behind. Our journey through deep space was long and quiet. is finally over. Now we look upon our new world for the first time. On these alien shores, our destiny waits. A new beginning for mankind. Hello viewers and welcome to Sid Meier's Civilization Beyond Earth. I'm your host, Pipiju Chu, and welcome to episode 1 of our newest Let's Play series. Hello folks and welcome to my most anticipated game of this fall 2014. Um, in just a few moments shortly, because the game needs to load, we will uh, yeah, set off and make Planetfall inside Beyond Earth. And this is just an absolutely fantastic, uh, well, 4X game. There we go. I don't know why. It takes you interactive has been, um, yeah, they've been really stingy with those disclaimers recently. Anyhow, um, I figured we'd just boot up a new uh, game here where we set up a new match and uh, really roll with it. But to um, give the people who, who care a look at the menu, they're very simplistic. They're single player, multiplayer, mods, and options. Op rather, options being what you might imagine them to be, other being um, the Civipedia and Hall of Fame and stuff like that. Um, either way, uh, they've done, yeah, they've, they've added quite a few new adjustments to the game and they and they and they do really make a large difference we'll check those out shortly one of the things being um, how you select your faction and all uh, just checking out the victory or sorry not victory but uh, the starting game settings we'll be playing out the game on normal we'll start it off with uh, rather we'll, we'll start off the game pace on standard and the thing that I wanted to bring to you guys attention is the map sizes they seem to scale smaller rather than upwards and with that said um, a standard game for eight people is as you might imagine the default though uh, there's also a massive one but there doesn't seem to be say like two terribly huge maps inside the game just uh, just yet they might add it as an expansion I would I would assume but um, yeah that's one point that I wanted to bring up anyhow uh, inside the game you of course play as the uh, the lucky few people who are chosen by the respective um, sponsors or earthly uh, factions in the games universe to set off and pretty much colonize a new planet and in that process we got to choose a few different options as to uh, what we want to do to set up our faction and all namely we can uh, pick our sponsor which will determine what our faction basically uh, does and you know what their what their perks if you will are we can choose um, what type of colonists we want on our uh, say faction and as you can see I mean the overall like uh, thought process behind this is that you can pretty much mix and match different perks if you will and uh, yeah generate your faction like that we can also pick a spacecraft with a different uh, say special component on it, which is rather nice and we can also choose to carry um, some extra cargo which will give us a, a a leading say unit in some category over there so uh, with that said I figured we just take a look at these and uh, shortly begin begin our game um, so like I'm not gonna go through all of these 
simply because there's just quite a lot of options, but roughly they are divided up into a few different areas. You have your military operations and you know your military perks and stuff like this, such as Brasilia down here. You have some of the um, the economic stuff, so things geared towards production, such as say the Pan Asian Cooperative over here, and you also have a few um, say dedicated to science growth inside this game. Um, some of the some of the more like uh, I'd say unique or you know innovative game mechanics such as um, the Slavic Federation over here gain, gains a bonus for launching orbital things so satellites uh, you have your classic trade faction as well in general it's just a fantastic mix of different things um, but first yeah we're gonna go with uh, the pan Asian cooperative as our sponsor so we get a nice production bonus when we build things inside the game um, for colonists I think we'll go with engineers as you can see um, what we can do here is that we can pick uh, what type of resource we want our city to specialize or our city ease rather our entire faction that is to, to specialize in and with that and with that said I think we'll go for engineers just doubling down that production thing and likewise um, yeah there's uh, there's the other options for the people who want to read it um, in space craft category and the last two here are actually I'd say the most interesting out of the starting ones um, we get to choose one component to add to our spacecraft which will give us a bit of an early game type of benefit we can do a continental scanners which will scan yeah, the coastlines so we know roughly where uh, all of the borders are on the map which are quite neat we can have some retrograde thrusters and the description for this isn't too clear but you get to choose um, the general region that you uh, that you want to start your first city on so that's also quite useful so some stuff about just straight up money, um, reveal alien nests, aka the barbarians, or yeah, resources uh, there, and those are kind of useful, but I think um, the first two here are probably better. So we'll go with, uh, I think we'll go with continental scanner or surveyor. And moving onwards to cargo, we get uh, we get to choose between five different, say, specialty or uh, five different extra things that we want to put on here. We can start our first city with an extra guy inside it. We can start out with some more technology, some buildings, or some weapons, aka a soldier unit, or machinery, a worker unit. And I think what I'll do is that I'll go with hydroponics. We'll start out our first city with an extra uh, set of people inside it, so that'll be quite helpful. And, uh, well, going forwards once more, another cool thing inside the game is that while you can open up the advanced advanced setup here to uh, traditionally set up your civilization game but um, well, what you can do what uh, what the game allows you to do here is that it'll it'll generate a whole set of random planets for you to choose to really you know, play your game on and each of these yeah they, they I believe they of course all have their own seed so you can say save that um, name and you can send that to other people to let them use it but uh, these worlds are split up into a few different categories you can also um say get the game to bring out these ones over here uh the advanced ones apparently so those are quite different but i think we'll just go with quite a nice um terran world so something kind of like earth to start our first game with and i think that'll be just steiner 583b with that said that will start off our first round of uh civilization well beyond earth uh, so the game's probably going to use some time to generate our world. In the meantime, while we look, while some looked uh, to the stars and saw the gods, I saw possibilities, possibilities for a future that has fa finally come. Um, we have explored the unknown sky, and now we will colonize the alien shore. I will lead my people to great success as the Pan-Asian Cooperative discovers its new role inside the universe. Hello, so, uh, I am the begin. Advanced Integration and Simulation Resource, or Advanced. And as you can see, uh, the advisor feature makes an appearance once again. Right, so uh, like I said at the very start of the game, you uh, you make planet fall pretty much. So you designate where you want your first city to be set up inside this little uh, zone. Um, looks like we start off next to the coast, which is quite nice. We get uh, yeah, we have a canyon over here, and it looks like we started off in some grassland area. So we have a large amount of stuff inside our nearby areas that produce a lot of food, and you know what? I think we'll get our city to just be in the middle of it here. And I absolutely love this animation. 
But as the city just comes down, plops down, and the people, uh, yeah, pretty much make planet fall, land, and uh, drop off their very first settlement on alien shores here. Right, so in accord with, uh, you know, 4x game fashion, we have a few different things that we probably want to do uh, early on inside the game. Probably want to explore the area around here. Um, thanks to our coastal surveyor, we know that we've landed on the, I'd say, I'd, I'd say, the, yeah, the larger continent out of the two present. And unfortunately, it doesn't look like this map has a lot of islands, but I mean, we'll make do with that. It's not, uh, yeah, it's not really that big of a deal. So that's that. Uh, we probably want to set production and choose research for our people, but taking a look at some of the different game uh, elements right here, just to give you guys a bit of a briefing on the Hutton Hall. We have a lo lovely mini-map on the side, the resources inside the game, where the primary resources is research to research new technologies, energy, aka space money, um, health level of our colonies, which affects growth and amongst other things, C uh, culture, which is used to buy virtues and do other things. Um, we also have some of these things, some xenomath, some floatstone, and fire excite. I'll talk a bit about, about those later on. And uh, over here, one of the things that uh, Civilization Beyond Earth introduces is a system of affinities. Affinities are guiding principles towards the evolution of humanity. Um, there are three of these, and what, will, what, what these will do is that uh, as you level them up, your colonization gets, or your civilization gets uh, specific factional bonuses. Your units change slightly to, to be more aligned with that ideology, and at the very end, um, you get a special victory condition on locked for you or I guess other people with your same um, aspiration or uh, what are these called again <laughs> affinity so that's that uh, um, getting back to the game though let's set our production uh, we already have a we already have a, a explorer unit so that's good and I think what I'll do is that I'll get our people to build say a clinic first because I want to do some research right away that'll also bump up the health of our people which will make them grow say slightly faster and to just um, do things like that um, choosing a research inside the game unlike the previous civilization games it's uh, rather I'm not really sure if they had this in Alpha Centauri because I didn't play that um, instead of say having a linear like you know um, a one-way tree if you will in the other civilization games you get this nice web thing of um, say different stacks of research uh, objects that you gradually unlock, rather you gradually unlock going outwards. Um, so taking a look at briefly uh, some of these, of course later on we'll be unlocking I'd say the vast majority of them. Um, just taking a look at the ones that are recommended right now, we have genetics. Genetics uh, allows us to build two structures. Um, you can pause the game and read these if you'd like, but they're more or less um, about health and science, um, ecology, ecology recommended by the economic guy advisor allows us to build a uh, miasmic repulsor that is a specialty building of varium which just more or less generates food and more food from deserts actually an ultrasonic fence to repel aliens um, and engineering for military purposes we get to make a combat rover, a thorium reactor which in reality I believe just generates us money, um, a repair facility so yeah we can produce more things oddly enough and we also it feels titanium on the map and uh, how these work is that I believe as soon as you finish the first one inside the row you get access to everything in here and you can unlock those um, in the center over here what we have is uh, we pioneering which will allow us to, to send out colonists and trade and stuff like that and planetary survey which I think allows us to um, transport our units on the seas uh, I think what I'll do is that I'll go with um, I'll go with ecology first and we'll just uh, gradually move from there and in the meantime I'm gonna get our Explorer team to bounce around and to check what is um, out inside the great unknown over here oh and the other thing is that gradually what will happen is that not all of the not all of the different factions arrive onto the planet at the same time there's actually a bit of a time delay so it looks like we've uh, we've arrived first and I think you do in every single single player game that you play but uh, gradually as the game goes on more and more factions will make their appearance and oh another thing that they've introduced is uh, there's actually yeah there's a quest system inside the game which is quite neat um, I'll show you guys those as they pop up but those more or less guide us through the first portion of the game and afterwards they um, they more they're more or less just guidelines for what you should do and they'll reward you accordingly as you go through them 
Um, what I think I'll do is that I'll get our guys to gradually wander around here, just get a general scope of what is around our people. Um, but talking a little bit about how you win the game, there are uh, there's five different ways to win the game. Two of them are available to everybody, and three of them are conditional. Pardon and oh, would you look at I that? I may be able to assist you. Oh, it doesn't actually read you the message. All right. Um, one of the things inside the game is that the the planet is littered with artifacts, aka like runes and stuff from the previous civilization games. We using explorer units, we can explore these objects, which will uh, grant us specific bonuses, which is uh, quite neat. Um, going back to the victory conditions, we're gonna explore this area next turn. But uh, the victory conditions are. Um, you can kill everybody else, of course. You can win through doing a whole bunch of research as a, as a research quest. And there are three um, ideology quests or affinity quests. If you bump up one of these purity slash you know, levels up to the uh, the maximum that you can get them to, um, you unlock a specialty quest which will allow you to revisit, uh, or they say revisit Earth, and um, do something there. So that's that. In the meantime, I really want to access that um, that derelict uh, settlement right there, but I just can't reach it because of these uh, alien units present on the map. And yeah, inside the game, the aliens here they uh, they're they're not say they're not hostile if you don't anger them. And with that said, so long as we don't attack them and so long as we don't bother them, um, they should be more so friendly than not. Your explorer has noticed something strange nearby. It could be a ruin, some sort of wreckage, or perhaps alien. And right, so we should be able to just mouse over here. And we should be able to do this, construct an expedition, and gradually uncover what is uh, inside that derelict settlement, I guess. So that'll be that, and it looks like we found two other things. Our city has grown to three citizens, which is quite nice. We unlocked a quest, which is found an outpost to build our first city, and we found a research pod over here. And these are, um, yeah, these are supposedly things that um, the that 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 were detached from the rocket, I think, that we landed with. And with that said, if we go over there, we get some extra goodies, so we might want to do that in due time. And, oh, would you look at that? Somebody else has landed, and looks like that is one of the... The temple uh, doors of the Protectorate are open. Yeah, and it looks like that is the, uh, the well, the second faction uh, on the, um, in, in the, in the match has landed there. So they'll be, of course, getting their civilization up and running shortly. Ah, luckily we have a bit of a head start coming from our position and all, so that's quite nice. We've got some lovely uh, town growth and all. Um, so that's pretty much that. Haven't actually seen the layout for this. Three represents how many uh, people we have inside the settlement. This small five represents how long it'll take for that place to uh, to fin it or yeah to grow one in one size. Twenty seven is the amount of yeah combat strength strength it possesses. It possesses also a specific amount of hit points to defend itself, and this thing produces its things uh, is located over here. The thing is that I've um, the last Civilization game I had played a lot of was uh, Civilization Four, not Five. And with that said, I mean, there's, uh, there's yeah, there's that getting used to period for that for the HUD and all. Your oh. has discovered something wonderful. There are many more sites like this to investigate around the world, so you might want to consider building additional explorers to send to these locations. And let's see what we have here. So our expedition has thoroughly investigated this area. It found no survivors, but it did, but it did find records from the desperate days of the failed settlement. A cycle historical analysis of their struggles has provided your people with insight on how to avoid the mistakes they had made, and provided us with some culture, which means that uh, it looks like we have 29 out of uh, or 39 out of 20 culture, which means next turn we will be uh, yeah getting a a virtue which is a bit of a perk if you will i think it, they had something very similar in civilization 5 can't remember the name of it though so that is that 
uh, we can develop a virtue right now actually and these are split up into different columns over here so we have might which is military stuff prosperity which is yeah growth on expansion knowledge then self-explanatory and industry which is productivity and stuff um, checking out the ones that we can unlock right now adaptive tactics allows us to gain veterancy faster frugality allows us to gain more food uh, or rather retain more food after the city grows um, foresight gives us more science when healthy but I think ultimately building a few more buildings will be uh, yeah quite nice so let's get labor logistics that should make building our buildings faster um, choosing production for our city let's pump out a worker unit so that we can modify the terrain around us and get some stuff going like that <coughs> Excuse me, folks. And I think we'll just let that go and do its thing. Uh, let's get our unit to come over here, grab that uh, research pod. Um, inside the research pod, we found a collection of goods and luxuries. Perfect. From the old earth that your people never thought they would see again. It's things like, I don't really know, like Twinkies and stuff, I guess. These rally and refocus are people providing 20 culture and my oh man would you look at that we have to choose another cultural bonus already so that is quite nice i guess we're getting a cultural advantage there and oh that's right um at times depending on i think these are triggered by buildings units and a lot of other stuff because i know for a fact that buildings have tr triggered them um for me previously and i think i saw one related to uh where units were so uh what these are is that they're these kind of like multi you know path choosing bits here. Occupational hazard is the name of this one. It's clear that the indigenous species of these planets were of this planet pose a threat to our growth, though we cannot determine their intelligence. Their hostility has been documented. Moving forwards we must decide how to deal with them. Do we attempt to domesticate the wildlife or do we or do we uh, try to exterminate it? So uh, we have to make a choice here and depending on what we do with our choice it'll increase the level where they'll help increase the, the levels for supremacy, purity, or harmony. The ideas behind this is that supremacy involves advancing the human race through uh, transhumanism if you will so you modify your people with machines and stuff like that. Purity means you do whatever you want but just don't or rather don't modify people at all and harmony means be more in sync with the planet and these of course all provide different benefits depending on what path you take I'm more inclined to go with purity and supremacy instead of harmony just more so because so with that said I think we'll um, I think we'll leave the uh, the door open by domesticating wildlife so uh, what this should do is that it should help us go towards those levels to some extent. I don't really know when we get the results from those, but that is uh, pretty much just that. Right, and we can develop another virtue over here, and this time I figured we'd get, uh, we could get, say, something like um, let's see, I don't really care about energy, but uh, having scalable infrastructure to build wonders faster would be quite nice. So I think I'll double down on that, and uh, yeah, we'll go just like that. Oh, and uh, one of the things that you might have noticed is that we get the option to shoot those uh, alien, alien wildlife when they come close to our people, but I don't have to. Yeah, and we get to meet the Franco-Liberia or Iberia race, uh, or faction rather. The thing is that these uh, these alien populations are actually neutral when you first arrive on the populate on the uh, on the planet. They have these lovely green icons, meaning that they won't attack you on site, where they don't feel as though they're threatened. So uh, you can wander around them, and they probably won't care. Though, if you move, say, close to one of their nests, that's when they start um, becoming angry and uh, start to start to attack you. So that is pretty much just that. And I think our city grew again, which is quite nice. And populations where some, uh, some aliens have been detected in that area. We'll take a look at the terrain later on, as there are quite a few of these uh, neato things just um, lying about here. I'll see actually whether or not we can um, bring up the um, the view here this to check those things out. This is the view. It displays the effect areas of units that are in orbit. Effect areas cannot overlap, so it is useful to plan launches ahead of time. This view also shows your launch coverage area. An orbital unit must be launched over a tile with coverage. Coverage can be extended by constructing city buildings. That's not exactly the thing that I was looking for, but I mean, that works too. 
Oh, there we go. Um, we can do yield icons, and I think that pulls up what these different locations have. Well, no, the thing I'm looking for is uh, resource icons. So there we go. We can add some more information to our map just like that. That'll tell us where all of the, um, the strategic and luxury resources are, so that's quite neat. And uh, yeah, that is pretty much just that. Right, I think the video, uh, rather, it's been somewhere right around 20 to 30 minutes inside the game, so I think we'll finish off this turn and we'll end part one over here. And what did we find? Uh, we can go for one more turn. We found a, a resource pod over here, so we might as well claim it. Oh. Yeah, these aliens don't seem to want to move. In that case, I think I'll just get the explorer team to stay where it is, to stay put, and... Um, yeah, pretty much that'll be that. Right, so uh, I hope you guys enjoyed episode one of our new Let's Play series, and I hope that uh, you'll stick around for episode two shortly. Uh, but bye for now.